In this video, we are going to first do a little manipulation to our roof truss that we created, and then we're going to add our roof trusses and some additional framing and then the roof sheathing. So let's get started. The first thing that we want to do is we've created this mono truss or a single slope truss. And typically on a roof, we are going to have an overhang. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create an overhang on this side of the truss. So if I click on the truss and I go to edit family, I'm just going to take this line and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to offset it about two feet. And then I'm going to use my trim and extend and attach those and then delete that off. So now I have a two foot overhang on this side. I'm not going to add an overhang to this side because I'm going to use my truss itself to do that overhang. So I'm going to go ahead and do load into project and I want to overwrite the existing. Now, one thing this did, it messed up some of my coping. So I am going to need to go back in and do that, but I want to wait because I also want my truss to overhang this direction. So the first thing I want to do, because I want to make sure, but this should be 40 feet. If I go from here to here, it is 40 feet. So I really want my truss to span from here to here to 42 feet. So I'm going to just grab this and I can just extend this to where it is 42 feet. And you see it expanded. So now again, I've got to go in and clean all of this up. It should be simpler this time since you already know how to do it. To remind you how to do this, if I hit the tab key and I unpin this, I can drag this up into here. So again, I'm going to do that with all of my parts and pieces. And then again, if I hit the tab key and if I pick cope and I pick this one that I want to cope to that one, it will do that. So I'm going to quickly go through and fix my truss and then I will come, I'm going to stop my video and then I will come back. When you get done, your truss should look very similar to mine. So now all we've got to do is we need to move this. I'm going to select my truss and I'm going to do move and I'm going to grab this bottom corner and I'm going to place it over here where my two buys are. So now I should have an overhang here and I will have an overhang up here on my roof. So now if I go back to my level two plan, in my level two plan, I can now see my truss. So again, I need to move it. So I'm going to grab it and I'm gonna do move. And I want this corner to align with this corner here. Once I do that, I want to go to my 3D view just to see if it's doing what I think it's doing. And everything looks good from this point. So I know I'm going to have another truss here at the very end. So I can go ahead and go back to my level two and grab my truss and do copy. And this time I'm going to pick this side of it and I'm going to copy it up to this corner. Again, once I get that in place, I want to check my 3D view and everything is looking really, really good. So now I'm gonna go back to my level two plan and I need to figure out the spacing for the remainder of my trusses. Truss spacing is the distance between the trusses. The standard roof truss spacing is two feet. Almost all residential trusses use this spacing. There is a misconception that spacing trusses every 16 inches on center is better because it will be stronger than the average two foot. That is not the case, especially since we designed ours with two by six materials. We should be safe going to two foot on centers. Since we did our wall framing at two foot on center, we can pretty much just copy these trusses from location to location. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to first select my truss. 
and then I'm going to go to copy and I want to pick the midpoint of it and then I want to pick the midpoint of each of my walls below. Again, when I do this, I need to make sure that my multiple is on and then I can pick that and just keep on going. I'm going to pause my video and when I get completed, I will resume the video. Once I have that completed, again, I want to go to my 3D view and you can see it looks pretty impressive to have all those tresses in there. So the very next thing we need to do is to add the sheathing on top of the roof and then we will be complete with our wood framing model. So we're going to do the roof a little different than we've done roofs in the past. Again, I'm going to go to architecture and I'm going to go to roof, but this time I'm going to do roof by extrusion. And I want to do pick a plane and I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick this plane. And it comes up to level two and that's fine. And I want to do an offset of three quarter inches because my material for my roof is going to be three quarter of an inch. So if I say OK, then it comes in and it gives me my roof type. So I'm just going to select this one. I'm going to do edit type and I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to call this my sheathing. And I'm going to say OK. I'm going to go in and edit it and I want to edit the structure to be plywood. And again, I have a sheathing and I want to change the thickness to be three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to say OK. And again, it gives me the thickness there. And then basically, I'm just going to draw from this end of my truss to this end of my truss. And then I'm going to click on the check mark. And if you look, we have our sheathing in there, but it still came down into my trusses. So I want to grab that and I want to do a level offset of 1.5 and hit apply and now it is on top of my trusses. So now we have completed our framing. If I go back to my level 2 plan, there's a couple of things I want to show you. Now that we have this framing, it's very easy to cut sections and do our details for our construction documents. So again, if I just go to view and I go to section, I have some choices when I go here. I can do building section or wall section and I'm going to do wall section. I'm going to click here and just come across and I want that view to be at a different scale. So I'm going to change that to three quarters of an inch equals a foot. And I'm going to say apply. Now I'm going to go to that detail. And again, I want to change this to fine. And now you'll see down here in the corner that this detail is at three quarter inch equals a foot. If I zoom in here, because my concrete had hatching that is in there. I already have some heights set up here in my detail. So at this point, I can go in and just start filling in information. I can add text to it. I can add dimensions to it, etc. Then when I go down here to my sheet setup, I could create a sheet, new sheet, and I'm going to set it at 24 by 36 by going to my title blocks and again I'm going to pick 24 by 36 which is actually 22 by 34 here and I want to pick that I want to do load and I want to say OK. So now I have this sheet. Now I can take that section that I just did which was my wall section and I can drag that onto my sheet. And now you'll see it's on there. And if I go back to that wall section, I could come in and start adding some information that needs to go in here, like blocking is usually shown like this. And I can just do that with lines. I could come in and add some notes. I could do a 
note that says that this is 2 by 6 wood studs at 24 inches on center and I can move that over and I can add an arrow to that so I could pull it down like that if I wanted to also has where I could pull it up to where it does like that and then I could finish my detail and when I go to my sheet that I created you'll see all of that shows up on there so it's very simple once we have these framing sections drawn in three dimensions to just pull them onto our sheets and add the information to them that is needed keep in mind this model is nowhere near completion we would need to finish adding the sheathing in the other parts of the exterior the fascia boards and many other elements but this gives you an idea of how the framing works in Revit for your submittal for this part of the project, you just need to include your final 3D model of your framing with the roof sheathing on it. You don't need to do any of the detail items that I discussed. Just attach it to the assignment and then you will be completed. So this concludes the section on wood structural framing. The next section we'll be looking at will be steel, which will be the last section for the semester.